Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. Today we are going to talk about 2.2, where we will learn to solve fraction and decimal equations. It's very similar to solve normal equations, but of course, because of the fraction and decimals, they're a bit more complicated. But before we get into the examples, let's look at a few e equations. Here's equation A, B, and C. I'm going to ask you to pause here for a few seconds, rank these equations from the least difficult to the most difficult without actually solving it, just by looking. I will assume that these are might be your result. You might think the fraction one is the most complicated one, and the whole number is the least difficult, and then the decimal is kind of in between. Okay, now what if I actually tell you these three equations are exactly the same? So what if there is a way that we can actually change this equation into that and also change this equation into that in one or two steps? That would actually make everything a lot easier than we're just dealing with whole numbers. And that is the main focus for this lesson. When there are fractions in equations, we could solve it by a process called clearing the fractions. We will multiply both sides by the common denominator of all the denominators to cancel off all the denominators. This technique only works when fractions are in the equation, not expressions. So let's have a look at some examples. Let's take this uh, question as the first example, this one we just saw. So 6, 7 over 6x plus 11 over 3 equals 5 over 6x plus 61 over 18. So here's how it goes. In order to cleave the fractions, we need the common denominator. In this case, we look at 6, 3, 6, and 18. Common denominator. Let's be clear. Common denominator is a number that all the denominators can actually go into. So it has to be either equal to the biggest or even bigger than all of the denominators right now. So we need a number that 6 can go into, 3 can go into, and 18 can go into. And that would be 18. Because 6, 18 divided by 6 is a 3, 18 divided by 3 is a 6, 18 divided by 18 is a 1. So that's actually divisible by all of them. Okay, after we find the common denominator, we're actually going to multiply everything by 18, by this common denominator. And if you're kind of used to doing fractions, you can also choose to do 18 over 1. And then you can type these into your calculator, 7 over 6 times 18 over 1. That will give you a 21x. And then 11 over 3 times 18 over 1 is going to give you a 66. 5 over 6 times 18 over 1, that is going to give you a 15x. 61 over 18 times 18 over 1 is going to be a 61. Now, you, if you look at the previous question right here. You see, we got the exact same question right there. 21x plus 66 equals 15x plus 61. So you see, in one step, we cleared all the fractions. Now we just have a whole number equation to solve. So since we have variable on both sides, we're going to move the variables to one side. So I'm going to subtract 15x on both sides. That's gone. We got 6x plus 66 equals 61. Then I can move the number over, subtract 66 on both sides. We got the 66 cancel, so we got 60, a uh, 6x equals negative 5. Divide both sides by a 6. x equals negative 5 over 6. We keep our answers as fractions. Okay, moving on, number 2. The denominators we have is 2, 4, and 8. So common denominator, I'll just refer to as cd from now on. So we need a number that 2 can divide into, 4 can divide into, and 8 can also divide into. So it's going to be 8. Then we're going to multiply everything by 8, or by 8 over 1. So n over 2 times 8 over 1, that is 4n. Negative 1 over 4 times 8 over 1 is a minus 2. On the right side, 1 over 8 times 8 over 1 is a 1. So I can add 2 on both sides, 4n equals 3. Divide both sides by a 4, n equals 3 over 4. So same thing, see? In one step, we have cleared all the fractions, and we are just left with some whole numbers. So now we can uh, move on to example 3. We have a 3, a 2, a 6, and a 9. So let's see. Common denominator. Let's say you see, oh, I see a 3 and a 2. Well, they can both go into a 6. So it must be a 6. However, we have a nice 6 
can't go, well, six, nine can't exactly go into six. So now we have to choose a common denominator for six and nine. They can both go into 18. You might actually at first think, oh, six, twice of six is 12, but 12 is not divisible by nine. So you have to go even higher for, uh, for the common denominator. So now we found out it's six, it's 18. We're going to multiply everything by 18 over one. By 18 over 1 by 18 over 1. Okay, 2 thirds times 18 over 1, that is going to be a 12. y over 2 times an 18 over 1, that is going to be a negative 9y. Negative y over 6 times 18 over 1, that's a negative 3y. 5 over 9 times an 18 over 1, that's a positive 10. Then we move the variables, we're going to add 3y on both sides, so the negative 3 and the 3 is gone. 12 minus 6y equals 10. Subtract 12 over, we got negative 6y equals negative 2. Then divide both sides by a negative 2, a negative 6. Again, this is a negative 6 times y, so in order to get rid of the negative 6, we got to divide both sides by negative 6. That's a pretty common mistake. A lot of you might see, oh, it's a negative 6, so let's add 6. No, we have to do the inverse operation. Right now it's multiplication, so we have to divide. So the negative 6 and negative 6 are gone. On the right side, negative 2 over negative 3 simplifies to be 1. I mean, negative 6 simplifies to be 1 over 3. Number 4. So no matter what, when we see parentheses, we still have to distribute first. We still have to distribute first. Okay, so 2 minus 3. And 3x over 10 is the same as 3 over 10x. I can pull the x uh, to next to the fraction or on top of the fraction. Either way, it works. 3 fifth x, and then 3 over 5 times a 4 over 1, that is a 12 over 5. Then I can clear the fractions. I have a 10, I have a 5, I have another 5. So here's one thing. When you do this clear the fraction, you have to multiply everything. Uh, uh, you have to multiply the common denominator on every single thing. Because whatever you do to the left, you have to do it to the right to keep the equation work. So if you feel like you might miss that, with the 2, well, to put it as a 2 over 1, to remind you, even the number 2 in the front is still a fraction. And in this case, the common denominator is a 10. So I'm going to multiply everything by a 10 over 1. Multiply by a 10 over 1. So you got a 10 over 1 times 2, that's a 20. 3 over 10 times 10 over 1, that's a negative 3x. 3 over 5 times a 10 over 1, that is a 6x. And then 12 over 5 times a 10 over 1, that is going to be a 24. I right, keep solving. Move the x over, minus 6x. Okay. And then we got 20 minus 9x equals 24. Then I minus 20 on both sides. That gives me negative 9x equals negative 4. Same situation, I got to get rid of the negative 9 by dividing both sides by a negative 9. Final answer, x equals 4 over 9. That is example 4. Moving on, example 5. Things got more complicated. So same thing, we see the parentheses, we got to distribute first. So copy everything else down. So negative 7 over 2n plus 2 thirds times 3 over 2. That's a on the top of 6, on the bottom of 6. So it's just going to be 1n. Then 2 over 3 times a negative 2 over 1. That's a negative 4 over 3. On the right side, 8 over 3 times a negative 5 over 3. 5 times 8 on the top is a 40. 3 times negative 3 is a 9 with a negative sign in the front. And 8 over 3 times a negative 3 over 2. So that's a 24 on the top, a 6 on the bottom. So it's going to be a minus 4. And then minus another 7 over 4. Like I was saying, if you, were like, you feel like you're going to forget that you need to multiply everything by the common denominator, well, put anything that does not look like a fraction, fraction into a fraction form. So I'm just going to put an over 1 for the 1n and the 4. Let me actually change the color to indicate to you what I did. So I'm putting them over 1 to indicate they're actually fractions as well. Now I'm going to clear the fractions. For the denominators, I have a 2, a 3, a 9, and a 4. So 2 is divisible by 4, so I don't even have to consider the 4. So between the 3 and the 4, I know I can have a 12, potentially, but 12 is not divisible by 9, so that doesn't work. Then I have to go higher. Does 24 work? Well, 24 also doesn't work because now 
ever since I found the 12 being the uh, de common denominator of 3 and 4, I can only go with multiples of 12. So if, for example, if I go 16, well, 16 won't be divisible by 3, even though it's, it is divisible by 4. So I have to go multiples of 12. 24 doesn't work. The next multiples of 12 will be 36. Well, 36 is divisible by 9, so I know it has to be 36. So I'm going to multiply everything by 36 over 1. Everything by 36 over 1. 36 over 1. Okay, there you go. Negative 7 over 2 times uh, 36. Uh, well, that is going to be basically 7 times 18. So it's 126. So negative 126 n plus 1 n times 36 is a 36 n. 4 over 3 times a 36 is a 48 on the right side. Negative 40 over 9 times 36 over 1 is a negative 160 n. The negative 4 times 36 is minus 144. Negative 7 over 4 times 36 over 1 is 63. There you go. Now I'm going to need to combine like terms on both sides of the equation. So negative 126n plus 36n, that is 90, negative 90n minus 48. On the right side, I have negative 160n. Then minus 144 and 60 is a negative 144 minus 63 is going to be negative 207. There you go. And then I need to move the variables. I'm going to add 160 and on both sides. That is gone. I got a 70 and minus 48 equals negative 207. There you go. And then I'm going to add 48 on both sides. So I got 70 and equals negative 159. 48 on the left side canceled. Then I just divide both sides by 70. N equals negative 159 over 70. That can't be simplified, so that is my final answer. That's example 5. Moving on, example 6. Another complicated one. First, we got to distribute to get rid of the parentheses. 1 over 3 times 9 over 4, that is 3, 4, x. 1 third times 1 is a 1 third. Then plus 7 over 6. On the right side, 3 halves times 1 half, that's a 3, 4, x. 3 halves times a 1 is 3 halves. Okay, now it's time to find the common denominator. 4, 3, 6. Well, let's say 4 and a 3. The common denominator is a 12. Okay, the rest, well, 12 works for 6, 12 also works for 4, and 12 also works for 2. Great, it has to be 12. So I'm going to multiply everything by 12 over 1. 12 over 1, 12 over 1, 12 over 1. So I got 12 over 1 times 3 over 4 is a 9x, and 1 third times 12 over 1 is a 4. 7 over 6 times 12 over 1, that is a 14. 3 over 4 times 12 over 1, that is a 9x, and then 3 halves times 12 over 1, that is a an 18. Okay. Time to combine like terms. So we got 9x plus 18 equals 9x plus 18. Well, if I start actually moving things around, so track 9x on both sides. Well, I got a 0 plus 18 equals 18, which means I got, if I subtract the 18 over by on both sides, I got a 0 equals 0. So the question is, is 0 equals 0 always true? Is that always equal? Yes, it is. So in this case, that means any number would work for x. So my answer would be all real number. So whenever you have a 0 equals 0, that would actually be all real number. If let's say you got an answer as 0 equals 2, well, that will never work. In that case, it is no solution. So make sure you understand how these two special cases work. So that's about all the examples for fractions. Now let's move on to decimals. One last thing about fractions, I can't emphasize enough. When you try to clear the fractions, after you find the common denominator, make sure you multiply every single item with the common denominator. 
Doesn't matter if it's a whole number or it does, it's just an x, whatever it is, you've got to multiply that term by the common denominator. Now let's move on to the decimals. We clear the decimals in a very similar way. We move the decimals the same amount until all coefficients are integers. Well, but here's the thing. If you look at these examples, they're not exactly fractions, so they look, don't look that complicated. If I, if I just ask you, can you do, let's say, a minus 6.3 on both sides? Can you actually do a negative 3.4 minus 6.3? It's probably quite easy for you because they don't look that much different compared to whole numbers. So in fact, do we actually have to do it this way? The answer is no. We can actually just treat decimal questions like whole number equations and just be very careful with, you know, when we subtract or, uh, or add. That's all. So now let's actually have a look at example seven. We're just going to do it as a normal equation. If this is a normal equation, first we're going to move the variables. So I'm going to add 6x on 6m on both sides. Okay. Negative 3.34m plus 6m is going to be a 2.66m. Plus 6.3 equals negative 3.4. Then I subtract the 6.3 over. Okay. I got 2.66m equals negative 3.4 minus 6.3 is going to be a negative 9.7. And then it's 2.66 times m, so I'm going to divide both sides by the 2.66. The question was in decimal, so I'm also going to keep my answer as decimal. But uh, in this case, I probably have to round, so it's negative 3.65 after rounding to two decimal places. That's example 7. You see it works exactly like a normal equation, just of course you have some more complicated numbers. Example 8. First, we see parentheses. We got to distribute. So negative 22 plus 3.5 r. That stays on the left side. Then on the right side, 4 r. 4 times negative 4.7 is a negative 18.8. Track 4 r on both sides. We got a negative 22 minus 0.5 r equals negative 18.8. At 22 on both sides. We got negative 0.5 r equals a 3.2. Lastly, it's a negative 0.5 times r, so I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 0.5 r equals negative 6.4. That is example 8. Moving on. Example 9. Well, for this example, you have 1 eighth and 0.75. So since decimal is easier to work with for fractions, if you can actually change the fraction into a very precise decimal, again, very precise decimal, you can't round it even in the question. If you have to round it, then you might as well change the decimal into fractions to work with. So in this case, 1 eighth is actually a 0.1, uh, 0.125. You can change it into that, or you can actually carry the fraction and keep working until you have to kind of convert them. So in this case, let's say the left side, I have 1 8 times 2x, that is 1 fourth x. Then 1 8 times a negative 2 is a minus 1 fourth. On the right side, 0.75 times a 3, that's a 2.25x. 0.75 times a 2 is a 1.5. So let's say you have a fraction that is not easily convertible into a decimal. Well, then in that case, you would have to change this into a 3 fourth first, and then do the calculation with the fraction. So in this case, 3 fourths times a 3 is going to be a 9 fourths. Then 3 fourths times a 2 is going to be a 3 halves. And then I just do what we did in the previous examples, clear the fractions. We have a 4 and a 2. Well, that means I the common denominator has to be 4. So I'm going to multiply everything by 4. That gets me 1 fourth times a 4 is just a 1. 1 fourth times a 4 is a negative 1. And then 9 fourths times a 4 is a 9x. 3 halves times a 4 is a 6. Minus 9x on both sides. I got negative 8x minus 1 equals 6. Add 1 on both sides. So negative 8x equals 7. Then divide both sides by a negative 8. Next x is going to be negative 7 over 8. That is example 9. So again, even though you feel like decimal is easier to work with, there is a higher chance that the fraction, when you try to convert it into a decimal, is not going to be the best decimal. It's not be very precise if you have to round. 
So in, this, in that case, we're going to need to change the decimals into fractions. For this specific example, you can choose to change 1 8 into 0.125 to keep calculating with the decimals. Last example, number 10. First, get rid of the parentheses, 5.9 minus 8x, and then it's negative 8 times 4.96, that is a negative 39.68, equals negative 16.42 minus 5.2x. So we got negative 8x, and that is 5.9 minus 39.68. I got to combine like terms on the side first. So minus 33.78. That equals 2, negative 16.42, minus 5.2x. Then I add 5.2x on both sides to move it to the left side. So I got um, negative 2.8x, minus 33.78, equals negative 16.42. Then I add 33.78 on both sides. We got negative 2.8x equals a 17.36. It's a negative 2.8 times x, so I need to divide both sides by a negative 2.8 to keep solving. Final answer, x equals a negative 6.2. And that is example 10. That is everything for solving fraction and decimal equations. Thank you.